All right, in this scene, we're going to talk about the potassium sparing diuretics. And it's going to be represented by this banana amusement park over here. Banana in our videos reminds us of potassium. So this scene is going to remind us of potassium sparing diuretics. We have a few guys waiting to go on the roller coaster over here. And they're going to remind us of the different potassium sparing diuretics we want to be aware of. The famous mnemonic goes, keep your seat. Keep K for potassium and seat for spironolactone, epirinone, amylaride, and triamterine. Well, let's make this a little bit more visual. In the first seat over here, we see this spiral guy, the spiral lactate guy for spironolactone. Next to him, we see the up arrow guy for epirinone. Now, where's the third guy? He's actually on a ride. Let's take a look. This is the meal on a ride. Meal on a ride for amylaride. And we're going to explain why there's this scary insect guy next to him. And finally, we have the tricycle over here that's reading. Tricycle that's reading, or tri that's reading for our triamterine. So let's begin. Let's begin with mechanism of action. So if you'll note, spironolactone and plurinone here are sitting on this Waldo stone. It's like a stone that's got a picture of Waldo on it. Waldo stone or aldo stone for aldosterone. Spironolactone and plurinone are competitive aldosterone receptor antagonists, and they do so in the cortical collecting tubule whereas triamterine and amylaride block the sodium channels at the same part of the tubule. And that's why over here, amylaride, well, at least where his seat is, as well as the tricycle that's reading for triamterine, are sitting on top of this salt shaker over here. The salt shaker reminds us of sodium, and they're blocking it, as triamterine and amylaride block sodium channels. Now, with this mechanism of action in mind, we can understand the clinical use of the potassium sparing diuretics. For example, they're used to treat hyperaldosteronism, well, of course, if spironolactone and aplerinone block the aldosterone receptor, they're going to be used to treat hyperaldosteronism. They're also used to treat potassium depletion. Of course, if they're potassium sparing, they're going to be used to treat potassium depletion. Spironolactone is actually also used to treat ascites, hepatic ascites. And that's why, if you want, you can imagine the spironolactone guy over here sighing <laughs> to remind us of ascites. Now let's take a look at amylaride for a minute. Next to the meal on rides is this insect pus guy. This insect pus guy showed up in our video on diabetes insipidus. And he's got dyed beads in the insect pus. Dyed beads in insect pus for diabetes insipidus. Amylaride is also used in the treatment of diabetes insipidus, the nephrogenic type. And finally, under here we see the and sign next to the bomb over here. Anti and or anti androgen. Potassium sparing diuretics can act as anti androgens. With all this in mind, it's understandable that the adverse effects of potassium sparing diuretics will include hyperkalemia due to the increase in potassium, which can lead to arrhythmias. Spironolactone also has some endocrine effects, such as gynecomastia and antiandrogen effects. We can watch our video on spironolactone specifically for more on that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this incredibly weird scene on potassium sparing diuretics. Stay tuned for our next video in pharmacology and take care.